BG is a solo artist, plus he's a member of the High Force. Turk is a part of the High Force. Lil Wayne is a part of the High Force, which will be doing his solo album. And I know y'all all know Juvenile, who is a solo artist, and he's a high boy. You got me and my dog, Fresh. He do all beats, game spitting, however you want to live it, nickname it how you want it. Sugar Slim called All Shots, and I'm the number one stunt. Lil Wayne will begin his career as a preteen delivering hardcore Southern hip hop through years of maturation and prolific output during which the delivery of his humorous wordplay and rhyme gradually changed from childlike and witty to stoned and raspy. Wayne would develop into a multi-million unit selling artist with a massive body of work, one so inventive and cunning that it makes his claim of being the best rapper alive worth considering by many. Wayne would debut at the age of 11 and receive his first platinum certification five years later as a member of the Hot Boys, immediately thereafter becoming a formidable solo artist with the release of The Block Is Hot in 1999. This would be his first of 12 top 10 albums on the Billboard 200 during a period of constant output entailing not just successful lengths but also reputation building mixtapes and featured appearances on pop hits like Destiny Child, Soldier. Wayne would reach mainstream superstar status with the release of The Call of Three in 2008, a triple platinum blockbuster that would produce the number one pop hit, Lollipop, and the number six follow-up, Emily. The Call of Three would net Wayne three Grammy Awards, including Best Rap Album, throughout the 2010s, despite numerous legal and creative battles. Wayne would continue to be a regular presence on the upper reaches of the charts with albums such as The Call of Four that were released in 2011 and I'm Not a Human Being that were released in 2013, solidifying his status as a tour headliner, all while continually lengthening his list of collaborative hits, including the multi-platinum Sucker for Pain off the Suicide soundtrack in 2016 and the DJ Khaled Smash hit released in 2017. Wayne would top the Billboard 200 with consecutive LPs to Carter 5 in 2018 and Funeral in 2020. Weezy would continue to issue non-album singles and mixtapes like his 2021 Rich the Kid collaboration, Crush One Babies, and 2023 Nobody featuring DMX. Born September 27, 1982, to Miss the Wayne Michael Carter Jr. will be raised in the infamous New Orleans neighborhoods to the 17th Ward, Holly Grove, and the New Orleans East. Throughout his school years, Lil Wayne will be a straight-A student. Two of the schools that he would attend will be Abe and McMahon. Wayne never felt his true intelligence was expressed through any kind of report card. He would find music was the best way to express himself, earning him the nickname Tune from his stepfather, Rabbit, who would sadly lose his life to the streets. After taking the name Gangster D, he will begin writing Gangster Rhyme. Combining a strong work ethic with aggressive self-promotion, at 11 years old, Wayne would convince Baby of Cash Money Records to sign him to the label. Sita, who was reluctant at first, would eventually allow Wayne to sign. A year later, Wayne and BG will partner with Manny Fresh and be dubbed the BGs and release the album True Stories. BG will go on to release Chopper City. In 1997, Wayne will be rumored to have accidentally shot himself in the chest. Wayne will later reveal in interviews and in his music that it wasn't an accident at all. He had actually tried to take his own life. The same year of the Chopper City release, Weezy will officially run with the moniker Lil Wayne. Wayne will go on to state that he dropped the D from his first name in order to separate himself from his father who had never been in his life. Wayne would join fellow label mates BG, Juvenile, and Turk to form the Hot Boys, who would release their debut album, Get It How You Live in 1997. In 1998, Cash Money was signed a major distribution deal with Universal Records. Street famous, street famous, street famous. With major mainstream distribution, the Hot Boys' Gorilla Warfare album will reach the number one spot on Billboard's top R&B hip-hop albums chart list. In 1998, Lil Wayne would feature on Juvenile's hit single, Back That Thing Up, that would appear on Juvie's 400 Degrees album. Wayne would launch his solo career a year later with the album The Block Is Hot, featuring the hit single The Block Is Hot. The album would go double platinum. Wayne still had not reached Middle America as his hardcore rhymes and tough cash money sound had not yet crossed over. Wayne's second album, Lights Out, in 2000 would fail to match the success of The Block Is Hot. Lights Out will go gold. Weezy will go on to feature on the big-timers hit single, Number One Stunner. Wayne's audience will be rapidly growing. <laughs> 
While Wayne will credit Fresh for being primarily responsible for launching his music career, Weezy will be much closer to Brian Williams, a.k.a. Baby. When Juve left the label, Wayne will show his loyalty to Baby by releasing 500 Degrees 2002, which would go gold. Rumors will begin to fly about Cash Money's financial troubles and possible demise. The rest of the Hot Boys had left. Wayne's planned 2003 album would be scrapped. It would instead be released as an underground mixtape called The Drought. Wayne would begin to singly handle and take over the mixtape world after The Drought had drawn so much attention from the hip-hop press. Weezy used these underground releases to build anticipation for his next official album, The Carter, that would be released in 2004. The single Go DJ would reach number 5 on the hip-hop singles chart. Wayne would go on to feature on Destiny Child single, Soldier. Wayne had officially crossed over. Wayne would continue to feed the streets with a slew of mixtapes released in 2005. Dedication with DJ Drama and the suffix with DJ Khaled. Cash Money's future was no longer in doubt and traditional music business rules no longer seemed to apply. Wayne's tracks would be leaked onto the internet and various DJ mixtapes. Get Something was another bold move as Universal Funded Video was made without the track ever seeing the light of day. With his alternative marketing scheme working in overdrive, the 2005 release of the Carter 2 will be a major event, selling over a quarter of a million copies the week of its release. Fireman and Shooter with Robin Thicke will be released as singles. This album, for the first time, would have no production from Manny Fresh. The album will go platinum. Just from Wheezy, future Young Money label would appear on the album. The following year, Wayne and the Baby will release Father Like Sunday album, which will feature the hit single, Stuntin' Like My Daddy. With his mixtape still flooding the underground, including Dedication 2, Wayne was bubbling. With no official follow-up to the Carter 2 in sight, numerous collaborative tracks will keep Wheezy in the mainstream like Gimme That by Chris Brown, Make It Rain by Fat Joe, and Duffel Bag Boys by Player Circle, all three becoming big hits. The Carter 3 that was slated for 2007 wouldn't drop until a year later. The Carter 3 would drop in May of 2008, selling more than a million copies in the first week. With an appearance on Saturday Night Live and a handful of Grammys, Wayne's mainstream acceptance would be undeniable. Wayne would go on to perform at the Country Music Awards with Kid Rock, where he would play the guitar. The guitar playing would be part of Wayne's new involvement with rock music, including his help in signing Kevin Rudolph to Cash Money Records, plus an appearance on Rudolph's massive hit, Let It Rock. Wayne would release his Young Money mixtape. Young Money is the Army, better yet, the Navy. The official album, We Are Young Money, would drop that same year. Wayne's Rebirth album would drop in early 2010. Shortly after, Wayne would be sentenced to nine months for a criminal possession of a firearm. Wayne would do his jokes in PC on Rikers Island. Free at last. After serving eight months in prison, Grammy Award-winning rap star Lil Wayne has been released from New York's Rikers Island. He was sent there after a loaded firearm was found on his tour bus last year in Manhattan. But prison has not halted the career of this popular artist. Lil Wayne released a new album in September titled I Am Not a Human Being, which topped the Billboard charts at number one last month. And with his first day out of captivity, there's already plans to celebrate. Close friends will host a lavish homecoming celebration for him in Miami this weekend, and industry insiders are buzzing about what's next. MTV reports that he might soon perform along with fellow star Drake in Las Vegas. Ken Lombardi, CBSNews.com, New York. The Carter 4 will finally drop in 2011. With the lead single, Six Foot Seven, the album will reach the top spot on the Billboard 200. In 2013, Wayne will be slammed with criticism for a controversial verse he spit on Future's Karate Shop, where he made a reference to Emmett Till, the young black teenager that was gruesome in 1955 by white men. Wayne will go on to release his second volume of I Am Not A Human Being. The album will debut at number two, featuring the singles No Worries and Love Me. A sequence of singles to make up for the delayed The Carter Five would ensue Believe Me, featuring Drake, in addition to Wayne's stockpile of certified platinum hits. Another track, Nothing But Trouble, featuring Charlie would drop in 2015 as a contribution to the soundtrack for 808 The Movie. That same year, to make up for fan disappointment over the Carter 5 delays, Wayne will release Sorry For The Wait. In 2016, Wayne will become 
enrolled in the legal battle with Birdman and Cash Money Records, further complicating the fate of the Carter Five. These continued delays will prompt the release of the Free Weezy album. By the end of the year, Wayne will publish a memoir about his time spent at Rikers Island, gone till November, and scored another hit with Sucker for Pain. A collaboration for the chart topping Suicide soundtrack. The All Star track will top the Billboard rap charts and rise to number three on the RB hip hop charts. DJ Khaled will become one of Wayne's biggest collaborations the following year, topping the pop chart on his way to quintuple platinum. Wayne will finally drop the Carter Five after joining Blink 182 in 2019 for a co cool headline tour and mashup single What's My Age that will feature a broad range of guests J Rock, Lil Baby in XX Extension. It will drop in January of 2020 and enter the Billboard 200 at the top. In July of the same year, Wayne will re-release his 2015 mixtape, the Free Weezy album, as FWA. The project has seen an exclusive release only on one streaming service five years earlier, but the wider release will be different, with some tracks omitted completely and new mixes of songs that formerly included uncleared samples. 2021 will see the tracks BB King Freestyle featuring Drake and Funeral, both will top the Billboard charts and the release Ain't Got Time. In October of that year, Wayne would team up with Rich the Kid for the 10-song mixtape Trust Fund Baby. The project included only one featured guest spot from YG, in January of 2022, Wayne's 2011 mixtape, Sorry for the Wait, would drop on streaming services for the first time. The newly refreshed version of the tape would include four songs recorded around the time of its re-release, including guest spots from Lil Tika and Alan Kubas. In February of 2023, Wayne would drop I Am Music. I Am Music would include some of Wayne's best known, best loved, and best performing songs from across his career. That album would debut at number 25 on the Billboard Top 200. Wayne had made it. His status in the music world had changed from rapper to rock star. All would be peaches and cream as Wayne's extracurricular activities would impact his health. I'm James Vallis. Hip-hop artist Lil Wayne's private plane has made an emergency landing in Nebraska after he suffered a seizure and blacked out, according to reports, which say he has since regained consciousness and is refusing treatment. The incident happened on Monday afternoon when Wayne was flying in a private jet from Milwaukee in Wisconsin to California. It forced the aircraft to divert to Omaha in Nebraska, where it made an emergency landing. An ambulance responded to the scene and checked out Wayne, according to TMZ.com, which said Wayne had since regained consciousness and is refusing medical treatment. Other details were not immediately available. There was no immediate comment from authorities or Wayne's representatives. Stay with BNONews.com for the very latest and follow us on Twitter throughout the day for breaking news updates as it happens at BNO News. Rapper Lil Wayne was rushed to the hospital after he was found unconscious in Chicago. Reports say he suffered multiple seizures in a hotel room yesterday. The 34-year-old was forced to cancel his Las Vegas performance last night. Just last year, the rapper's private plane made an emergency landing after he suffered a seizure. Four years ago, Lil Wayne revealed he is epileptic and prone to seizures. In the valley last night, a Grammy award-winning rapper has been detained at a border checkpoint on possession of Action Force's Rafael Carranza has the latest. That's right, Lacey. You heard about it here first on Action 4 News. Rapper Lil Wayne was detained at the Falfurias checkpoint earlier today, according to a Border Patrol supervisor. <laughs> These are YouTube images of Lil Wayne's concert at the Dodge Arena on Thursday. This afternoon, agents in Falfuria has detained 12 people, including the popular rapper, on board two tour buses. Uh, one of our U.S. Border Patrol canine teams alerted to the possible presence of people or narcotics on the bus. That led to a secondary inspection, at which time they found marijuana, not on any one person, but in the bus. But they are not releasing how much. Thursday's concert was his first trip to the Valley. The amateur video posted on YouTube of last night's concert... <laughs> 
shows him performing in front of a packed house. Lil Wayne is a rapper with Cash Money Universal Motown Records. His real name is Dwayne Michael Carter Jr. He was scheduled to perform in Laredo tonight, but that event was postponed. Yeah, there was some fans uh, outside, uh, and we did make the announcement to them. Uh, you know, they were obviously disappointed, but uh, you know, we didn't have any incidents or anything like that. The general manager at the Laredo Entertainment Center, where he was scheduled to perform, tells Action 4 News they are working on setting up a new date. Lil Wayne has another scheduled performance in Corpus Christi on Sunday, but it is unclear if that concert has been postponed as well. Reporting in the newsroom, Rafael Carranza, Action 4 News. Now at 11, police have cleared the scene at a Miami Beach mansion. They raided the place this evening with a celebrity's prized possessions as their target. Rapper Lil Wayne owes someone a lot of money and he isn't paying, so police showed up to collect. CBS 4's Kerry Codd has more. Miami-Dade police descended on the Miami Beach mansion of rapper Lil Wayne Tuesday afternoon. According to police, they were serving a warrant in a civil case to seize property. We're told police forced their way into the rapper's home, valued at $10.3 million. TMZ is reporting that the police took items to satisfy a court judgment against Lil Wayne for $2 million. TMZ says the judgment is for money the rapper owes to a private jet company. What did police take? TMZ reports that authorities carted out some of Lil Wayne's pricey pieces of art and says he has about $30 million worth of art in his home. All the drama here didn't seem to bother this community too much. I spoke to a couple of neighbors off camera. They told me they've never had any problems with Little Wayne and that they've found him to be an excellent neighbor. This isn't the first time there's been police activity at Wayne's home. Back in March, the Miami Beach SWAT team was called to the house for a prank call of people being shot at the home. During Tuesday's police raid, we're told Wayne wasn't home at the time officers arrived. TMZ reports he's in Los Angeles. On Miami Beach, Kerry Codd, CBS 4 News Tonight. New at 5, trouble for rapper Lil Wayne. He was charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. According to court documents, today's development stems from a trip to Miami on a private plane last December. That's when authorities say they found the weapon during a search of the jet. The rapper is expected in federal court next month and faces up to 10 years in prison if he's convicted. We're also just getting this. A few minutes ago here tonight, the Miami Herald is reporting federal agents have found guns and coke in a private plane that landed at Miami Opelaka Executive Airport today. The paper reports rapper Lil Wayne was on that plane, which brought him here, they say, from California. The report says charges could be filed soon in federal court. His lawyer tells the Herald his client was allowed to leave the airport tonight. The FBI and the ATF are handling the case. At 5.05 this morning, new from overnight in one of his last acts as President Donald Trump issued a long list of pardons and included on that list New Orleans native and rapper Lil Wayne, along with his former chief strategist Steve Bannon. Bannon was accused of defrauding millions of dollars in a fundraising campaign supposedly aimed at supporting President Trump's border wall. The president himself, along with members of his family, were not pardoned. He doesn't have to announce a pardon. It could be done mm. in private and stuck in his pocket, and we wouldn't know it until he was indicted and pulled it out for defense. Same with the, the kids. And the pardons were issued very early this morning, even earlier than this morning. This was the story of Lil Wayne, a.k.a. Wheezy F. Baby. 